Thank you so much for actually clicking on this video. I really appreciate it. I had a lot going on in the past week. My son had his first birthday. I had some family things going on, but we're back at the YouTube and Daisy videos. So I hope you enjoy the video. If you do, make sure you subscribe. I really appreciate it. I really love the comments and the likes, so make sure that you drop a couple if I helped you or if you just want to support the channel. We're going to go ahead and dive on in. I appreciate it again. Love you, mean it, bye. Cholera, shock, bleeding, the common cold. These describe a few of the illnesses and effects that can plague your body. They hinder the way that you move, metabolize food, fight off infection, and more. This will cover different illnesses and effects, how you can track them, and how to boost your immunity to fend them off to stay alive. The status system in Day Z is like in real life. It isn't just one thing, it's many things that make up the whole. You. The four stats to keep in mind here are health, blood, energy, and hydration. All things that affect the immune system in real life. When you spawn in, your starting stats are set up like this. You have 100 health, 5,000 milliliters of blood, 650 energy, and 600 hydration. Then the max stat for each is 100 health, 5,000 blood, 7,500 energy, and 5,000 hydration. Knowing this information, we can move on to how each stat individually adds to how we heal and fight off infections in the Daisy universe. Starting with health, there are five levels with different icons to signify your health level and with each has a different status effect. 81 to 100 is no effect. 61 to 80 is a slight effect, you can still sprint. 41 to 60 is moderate and you can see a limp. 1 to 40 is serious and you cannot sprint and your vaulting is inhibited. Various attacks deal different damage. Infected inflict about 10 and a gunshot inflicts 31. This does vary depending on armor, range, bullet type, and such, but typical tier 1 guns like the IJ-70, M-Lock-91, and the FX-45 are not enough to cause so much damage you could not run, at least if other stats aren't killing you. Energy and hydration are connected to how fast you regenerate blood. The max energy is 7,500, and hydration is 5,000. There are four stages from full to empty, and when dehydration sets in, you lose between 6 and 11 HP per second, and starvation causes about 2 to 7 HP per second. Blood levels determine how fast you heal, but energy and hydration affect how fast you regenerate blood and come in different variations, so I made a graph and these icons so don't judge. Hydration between 300 and 599 and energy between 200 and 399, blood regens at 0 0.075 milliliters per second. Hydration between 300 and 599 and energy at 600 plus, blood regens at 0.15 milliliters per second. Same for if your hydration is 600 and above and your energy is between 200 and 399. Again, you regen 0.15 milliliters per second. Hydration and energy levels at 600 plus, you regen 0.3 milliliters per second. A few quick tips, baked food gives you more energy than boiled or dried and if you can find a container to store water from a well, you can fill your water 5 times faster than from sipping from your hands. Also, there is a max amount of water and food that your stomach can hold. If you exceed that, you will vomit and that just smells disaster. I've done a video on the basic crafting to get started and you can watch that after this one. Blood levels are directly correlated to how fast you gain health and are displayed like the health icon with different colors and fills and shows in game with the screen graying out until unconscious. If your blood is between 4501 and 5000 you have no effect, between 4001 and 4500 it's slight gray, between 3501 and 4000 it's moderate, and between 3001 and 3500 it's serious. Once you drop below 3000, you start receiving shock damage of around 5 until unconscious, and then from 0 to 2500 blood is death. The blood level dictates how fast you gain HP. With your blood level between 2501 and 3749, you generate about 1 HP per minute, a little less. And between 3750 and 4999, you generate 2 per minute and then with your blood being maxed out, you generate 4 health per minute. Knowing that, it would take about 15 minutes to generate full health from 1 HP with perfect conditions. Wobo has a brilliant guide on the immune system, how it works, and how you can keep it boosted and which stats affect what. And this is how the immune system works. 95% to 100%, you're immune to everything except for the brain prion. 65 to 94%, you're immune to the common cold and flu. And then below 65%, you aren't immune to anything. 
After this video, if you're still confused on the immune system, make sure that you watch the Wobo video. It's linked in the description. With that in mind, let's move on to the illnesses that come with poor stat management and if left untreated can cause some major issues with your character. Cholera is contracted from drinking contaminated water from ponds or rivers, or by drinking unpurified water from bottles or canteens, which have a 50-50 chance of spawning with the pathogen in it when it comes into the game. You can also get it from eating or drinking without washing your hands after butchering animals or players, and you'll know that if you have blood on your hands, which you can go and wash by going to a water source and just washing your hands. You can also purify water with chlorine tablets, most found in medical areas and hunting stands. The main symptom of cholera, while not instant, is vomiting, which drains your energy and hydration levels leading to death. Take tetracycline and eat small amounts of food and water to combat the illness. Avoid eating or drinking too fast or welcome yourself to Vomit City. Salmonellosis causes salmonella and is contracted from eating raw meat. Like cholera, the symptom is vomiting and the best method to cure is eating vitamin pills which boost your immune system to 100% for 5 minutes. The common cold and influenza are both contractable from other players and develop from being too cold, and it's not high up on the list of mortality rate, but high as can be on the list for annoying factor. The influenza strain in DayZ is not deadly, but super annoying due to the consistent coughing and the occasional sneeze. It makes you very easy to find, and it can spread like a wildfire. I didn't find a definite answer on the cure other than antibiotics, vitamins, staying warm, and fill up on food and water when you can. If you made it through 2020, then you know how to prevent getting it, Disinfect items used by other players, don't travel in groups, and stay warm. The common cold is practically the same as influenza, but sneezing is the common symptom. And again, it can give away a person's position. If one person in the group has it, within minutes the entire group can have it. Wearing a medical mask to prevent the spread using disinfectant or alcoholic tinctures to kill the virus strains causing the common cold. And from what I can tell, only time really gets rid of it. There's a ton of things out there that make your time in Chinaris a living hell, and it makes rage quit inevitable if you're not prepared for it. I made this guide in hopes that it will help people stay alive so they can enjoy the amazing things it offers. So whether you're new or old to DayZ, I hope this video helped. If it did, make sure that you drop a like, leave a comment, I really appreciate it and I love talking to you guys. And if you like all the channel videos, make sure that you subscribe, it'll let you know that I release a video about every week. And if you want to support the channel beyond just being a supporter of the YouTube, you can click on the GTX server link down below. You can rent yourself a Daisy server, Valheim, 7 Days, Rust, and it helps support the channel. That way I can use it to fund for the tools that I use to make them better. I am Richard Cranium. I love you, mean it, bye, and I'll see you in the next one.